This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in him. Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice and be glad in him. Well, this is the day and this is the way that the Lord has made. Well, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in Him, and be glad in Him. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in Him. For this is the day, and this is His way, that the Lord has made made oh yes the word of god that's why we are here to be faithful every day to read some some everybody can take 40 minutes to do what they really love to do we all do it we do it every day and so i want to bless you on this july 21st and thank you and encourage you for coming that we would read the word together because there's something about the fellowship of the brothers and sisters, isn't there? Even though we're not in the same town, if we know we're hooked together here, it is a blessing. So every single one of you are a blessing. I'm watching all these great names coming on. You're doing your greetings and I'm receiving every one of them on this July 21. We will be reading and we've just begun the second book Divrei Hayamin, Second Chronicles, and we are up to chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 1, and oh my goodness, my goodness, we're finishing up everything about the temple and celebrating such an exciting passage. So please, please, grab your coffee or tea or whatever and, and your Bible, and let's dig in and see what the Lord has for you answers for you, examples of things, things said that can apply to your life and to mine. Second Chronicles chapter 4, moreover, Solomon made a bronze altar. 20 cubits was its length, 20 cubits its width, and 10 cubits its height. And then he made the sea of cast bronze, 10 cubits from one brim to the other. It was completely round. And oh, <clears throat> Kathy has two really nice graphics of the sea with the bulls. 12 bulls were made, B-U-L-L-S, the animal, to hold it up. Please visit Kathy's graphics, such beautiful ones of today's reading. The height of this sea was five cubits, and a line of 30 cubits measured its circumference, and under it was the likeness of oxen, bulls, oxen, encircling it all around 10 to a cubit all the way around the sea. The oxen were cast in two rows, and when it was cast, it stood on 12 oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. The sea was set upon them, and all their back parts pointed inward. It was a hand breadth thick, a hand breadth thick, and its brim was shaped like the brim of a cup. Like a lily blossom, it contained 3,000 baths. And I bet somebody could put on there how much is a bath in words we understand. He also made 10 lavers and put five on the right side and five on the left to wash in them. Such things as they offered for the burnt offering, they would wash in them. But the sea 
was for the priests to wash in. And he made ten lampstands of gold according to their design. And he set them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. He also made ten tablets and placed them in the, tab in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. And he made one hundred bowls of gold. One hundred. Wow didn't do that in one day. Furthermore, he made the court of the priests and the great court and the doors for the court, and he overlaid these doors with bronze. He set the sea on the right side toward the southeast. Then Huram, oh, this wonderful craftsman who can just do anything and everything. He made the pots and the shovels and the bowls so Horam finished doing the work that he was to do for King Solomon for the house of God. The two pillars and the bowl-shaped capitals that were on the top of the two pillars, the two networks covering the two bowl-shaped capitals which were on the top of the pillars, 400 pomegranates for the two networks, two rows of pomegranates, for each network to cover the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on the pillars. He also made carts and lavers on the carts, one sea and twelve oxen under it, also the pots, the shovels, the forks, and all their articles. Horam, his master craftsman, made of burnished bronze for King Solomon, for the house of the Lord. Wow, where's me out? What a bunch of work. <clears throat> and a lot of it, I'm sure, in the hot sun. Maybe not, I don't know, but I would think so. In the plain of Jordan, the king had them cast in clay molds between Sukkot and Zeradah. And Solomon had all these articles made in such great abundance that the weight of the bronze was not determined. Imagine that. Thus Solomon had all the furnishings made for the house of God, the altar of gold and the tables on which was the showbread, the lampstands with their lamps of pure gold to burn in the prescribed manner in front of the inner sanctuary <clears throat> with the flowers and the lamps and the whip trimmers of gold, of purest gold. The trimmers, the bowls, the ladles, and the censers of pure gold. As for the entry of the sanctuary, its inner doors to the most holy place and the doors of the main hall of the temple were gold. And we move along to chapter 5. Chapter 5 of Second Chronicles. So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. Oh, that's a good word when you get to the finish of anything. The house of the Lord was finished and Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and all the furnishings, and he put them in the treasuries of the house of God. Now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel in Jerusalem, that they might bring the Ark of the Covenant. This started the whole thing, didn't it? A house, a place for the Ark. <clears throat> that they might bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord up from the city of David, which is in Zion. And therefore, all the men of Israel assembled with the king at the feast, which was in the seventh month. So all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. And then they brought up the ark, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. 
also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with him before the ark were sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. Kathy has a beautiful graphic of them doing that too and the smoke rising up. Then the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the temple to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. Can you picture that? Oh, beautiful. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles of the ark could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside. And they are there to this day at this reading. Nothing was in the ark. Got that? Don't let anybody tell you there was a whole lot of articles and stuff in the ark. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets which Moshe put there at Horeb when the children made a covenant with the children of Israel when they had come out of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites, who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Haman and Jedutun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding the trumpets. Oh my goodness. As a former trumpet player, I can't wait. I can't wait to see the replay or done again in live or 120 trumpets playing, sounding. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music <clears throat> and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. And the house, that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Oh, he brought his glory down and filled the house. And we move along to chapter 6 of Second Chronicles. And then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever. And then the king turned around and he blessed the whole assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel was standing. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has fulfilled with his hands what he spoke with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have chosen no city, from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there, nor did I choose any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Yet I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name may be there, and I have chosen David, 
to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father, David, to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father, David, <clears throat> for as it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well in that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple, but your son, who will come from your body, he shall build the temple for my name. For the Lord has fulfilled his word which he spoke, and I have filled the position of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised. And I have built the temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And there I have put the ark in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with the children of Israel. Oh my, what a day, what a day of the, the live glory of the Lord coming down, <clears throat> filling this house, showing his appreciation, his thankfulness that, and letting them know he knows it's done and now I'm coming to fill it. Oh my goodness, what a connection between God and his people. Mm. I love it. To be continued tomorrow, Lord willing. All right, we move along to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Paul is just really teaching away. Or do you not know, brethren? For I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. And he gives an example. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which we were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit <clears throat> and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law, for I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. 
Therefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin, through the commandment, might become exceedingly sinful. Did you get all that? If you need it, read it again. Go back after we finish. <clears throat> read it again, ask Holy Ghost to really bring understanding and revelation of that to you. All right, we move right along, y'all, to Psalm 17. Psalm 17, another prayer of David. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness. By your right hand, O oh, you who save those who trust in you, from those who rise up against them, keep me as the apple of your eye. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you want him to keep you as the apple of his eye? He will. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat hearts. With their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth as a lion is eager to tear his prey. And like a young lion, lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down, deliver my life from the wicked with your sword, with your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure they are satisfied with children. They leave the rest of their possession for their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Oh, won't that be something? When we die and go to heaven, we don't, we die from the earth, but we go on alive and we arrive there awake, but much more in the likeness of Jesus. Oh my, oh my, isn't that wonderful? All right, we wrap up today, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 19, verses 22 and 23. Connie's got it written out like she usually does. Proverbs 19, 22, and 23. What is desired in a man is kindness. And a poor man 
is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. How about that? The fear of the Lord leads to life. And he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. Praise God. My little marker goes right there. As I begin today to read and, pre and prepare and ask for good understanding and revelation of tomorrow's scripture. Glory to God. All right, y'all. Let's pray. Let's pray. Mm. <clears throat> precious, precious Father God. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful healing on my friend Blaine. And, and that he's home, just regaining strength. And Lord, let me hold up Israel. And her people, your people. You are bringing your people home more every day. Ah, oh, how exciting. You are delivering them from all the places they were cast. Generations ago, over 2,000 years ago, you are delivering the children and bringing them home to live on your land. Oh, thank you, Lord. We'd ask, Lord, that you would bring peace to Jerusalem today. Peace. Peace, precious Lord. Let it just flow everywhere in the land. All over Jerusalem. All over Tel Aviv. All over Gaza. All over the border areas where it's so dangerous. All over the wilderness. All over the areas that have been redeemed and planted and fruit trees are bringing forth wonderful produce and so are the fields. Every kind of vegetable and fruit and beautiful cattle growing, beautiful sheep growing to have meat. Oh, Father God, you are a good God. Lord, help the Knesset to rule as you would, to be several steps ahead of all the evil, ahead of everything planned to try to take Israel down. We'd ask, Holy Ghost, that you would visit them and, and bring them revelation knowledge. We bless you for it, Lord. We hold up America to you, Lord. And I'd ask, Lord, that you would deal with all the evil. And you are. You are. But we're going to continue to pray that. We see that every day more revealed. So shocking. So disheartening. It breaks my heart. But, Lord, you are doing that. Revealing and causing things to be exposed. To bring the healing in America. To wake up your people. Wake them up. They've been deceived into believing a lot of evil things. And being told they were good for them and they're not. Many things in the government today being designed to make us slaves. To take our freedom away from us. And Lord, we are calling on your name. For you are the only one, you're the only one, Lord, that can totally change that around. And we are encouraged that we see you doing that. <clears throat> Thank you, precious Lord. We'd ask, Lord, that righteousness would once again be bold and strong in people. Stand up boldly, asking for it, demanding it putting down, canceling the things that are taking away our Constitution. And Lord, we see more and more and more people are speaking 
of the Constitution. And getting familiar with it again and finding out what a treasure it has always been to us. We bless you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful word you've given us this morning. Lord, I hold up Suzanne Hinn. And I'd ask, Lord, that you would intervene with healing in this brain tumor. Father God, please, these are your servants. We're asking that you have a plan of healing. Lord, I hold up my sweet sister, Anne Marie. And Lord, I'm praying for her knee. I'm believing for her knee to be healed. Healed. In Jesus' name. Lord, there was a little girl named Grace. We're praying for little Grace, who was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery, knowing that there was cancer in her brain. Oh, Lord, please bring healing to that little girl. She's just barely started her life. Please, Lord. Let your shed blood be upon her for healing. I hold up my nephew, Joe, for total healing from cancer. Total healing, Lord. Please draw Joe closely unto your heart and rid his body of this terrible invasion. Lord, we are praising God that our sister Janine, uh, all that we hear is she's feeling well, and she's out and about, and we are happy, we are blessed. Father, we pray for these nations. We pray for Cuba, who's standing up boldly, even if it costs them their life, to gain freedom, freedom from the evil regime that's held them for 60 years. Lord, we hold up Haiti, and all of the confusion and problems and evil leadership there. Lord, I hold up Kenya. I pray for rain. And I pray for salvation and righteousness to just come forth boldly. Lord, we hold up Uganda and uh, that president is very ill. Lord, we are asking that you bring healing such a sweet Christian wife. Lord, please answer her prayers. Answer her prayers. Lord, we hold up Canada. And we'd ask that there'd be a great revival, breakout, like pockets of fire everywhere. And at this burning of churches down, this cold, hard heart against the gospel that you experience when you're in Canada. Oh, the people just with such a terrible attitude about you, Lord. Please, Father God, let revival burst forth. Let it burst forth in the USA. Let evangelists and pastors and teachers be bolder than ever. Let them reach out even farther in their contact of people to awaken and bring many to their salvation. Bring many to their knees, Lord. Many to their knees in true repentance that you might give them the most wonderful born-again experience. We thank you, Lord, and I'm going to thank you for listening to all the prayers, and all the praises of your sons and daughters who are here. Bless them, Lord. Cause this reading of your word to go out into all the places that you intend, Lord. You know how to do that. And help us to do what we can do by pushing share, by speaking to friends and relatives that, that are hurting, that really need a new avenue of the word of God. Let it spread, Lord, and have your perfect will and way with each and every one of us to bless and to glorify and magnify Yeshua HaMashiach 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah. And to that we cry, Amen, Hallelujah, Amen. Have a great day. Bye-bye.